Welcome to our back to school weekend at Victory. I would love to be with you in person, but earlier this week, I tested positive for COVID. As you can see, I'm more than well enough to be with you today, but I've continued to test positive. So out of, out of the, an abundance of precaution, I'm not with you in person today. But this is such an incredibly important weekend in the life of our church and the life of the families of our church. I just want to take a moment and welcome Newcastle in Meadville. We love you so much. I want to take a moment and welcome our online church as well. Cranberry, would you give them a warm welcome today? We love you guys so much. Listen, you know, as we enter into this school year, it can be so easy that we fall under the cloud of what's going on in our nation. But God has equipped you as a parent. God has equipped you as a student. And God has equipped you as an educator to be able to win in life, to be able to truly live in freedom and in victory. Let me take a moment and speak to our students. Whether you're an elementary student, junior high, senior high, or a college student, let me help you understand something. You are not the church of tomorrow. You are the church of right now. God is not going to use you in the future. He's using you right now. In fact, many of you right now in our high school ministry are being used in a way that I have to be honest with you, many churches are not being used. God is using you right now. And I want you to know that this weekend is about you. It's about your parents, mom and dads. In fact, the next few weeks, I'm gonna be talking to you about the presence of God, how to experience his presence. And, and the Bible says it this way, times of refreshing come from the presence of God. And I'm gonna be showing you very clearly in scripture how you can be in under literally the domination and vexation of a culture or you can be in the presence of God and there's something you can do to choose which one dominates your life. If you're an educator, a teacher, an administrator, if you work anywhere in our educational system, I want you to know that you are on the front lines and we're praying for you as well. This weekend, I was gonna do the service right alongside Pastor Ben Archer. Of course, Ben is our student ministries pastor and he oversees that generally for all of our campuses. Ben is such an incredible young man. Now I'm being replaced this weekend with a much prettier version. His wife Alyssa is joining him. This young couple, God's hands upon their life. Michelle and I counted such a remarkable privilege to serve Christ alongside this young couple. God's hand is moving in the next generation and this couple is leading it. So it's my great privilege. Would you at all of our campuses, Cranberry as well, would you just give an incredible welcome to Pastor Ben and Alyssa Archer. Hey family, how are we feeling today? Are we feeling good? Are we excited to be in the power and the presence of God? Hey, welcome everybody in all of our campuses. We are one church, multiple locations. It is so good to be in the power and the presence of God, amen? amen. Oh, I'm excited today. I'm excited because we're, we, we're celebrating and, and getting our students ready for back to school. And I got to tell you, this is an amazing generation that Alyssa and I get the honor and the privilege to come alongside you and, and to help steward as a church and just walk in what God has called us to. So I want to say thank you, family, for entrusting us with your kids. And you guys are remarkable. You have incredible kids. You do. And so here's what, what our segment is going to look like here for a, for a moment. We're going to bring a couple students up here in just a second. We're going to interview them as they are leading at our high schools in such a remarkable way. And they represent so many that are walking out the call of God on their lives. It's just incredible. Wait till you hear these two amazing students yes. just speak and minister to you. And I would encourage you that we always want to steward the word of God. Amen. So wherever you're at, whatever campus you're leaning into or even online, have your notes ready to catch what God has for you. Note takers are history makers. Yes. Amen. But, but before we go any further, we wanted to take a moment and honor Pastor John and yeah. Miss Michelle. We have amazing, amazing senior pastors here. And we are, yes, let's yes. give it up for them. Yes, they do. They are incredible. And we are so thankful and honored to be under their leadership. We know that we have been, they've poured into us so, so much in our whole entire family. And so we wouldn't be where we're at in our spiritual walk or in anything without them. And so we love you guys. We miss you and hope to, we'll see you next weekend. Yeah, yeah. And they are spiritual parents to us, mm -hmm. aren't they? It's just incredible. And I like to say this all the time. It's so true. They are unicorns in the kingdom. You know, they it's are. just rare to have um, a, such a, a mighty man and a, a mighty 
mighty woman of God. So again, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen, we get this amazing opportunity to interview two students. Could we welcome Alexa Spiker and Kyler Brown? Come on, give them a hand as they come on out. We are so glad to have you guys with us today. And, and you know, what I, what I love about what we're going to do here in a moment is that we've got 11 high school campuses yes. right now. And so um, Newcastle, you've got a few in your high schools. It's just mm -hmm. incredible. And Meadville, in just a short moment, I know that they're going to be coming in. But you two represent so many mm -hmm. inside our, our student body here and just walking out the call of God. And so I want to say thank you for saying yes to the Lord and, and walking that out. And so would you take a second and just tell us briefly about yourselves Absolutely. So my name is Alexis Spiker. I've been coming to Victory for a very long time, it seems like. Um, but I have the privilege to oversee our campus, Lincoln Park Sozo, at Lincoln Park Performing Arts School. And so God's doing remarkable things. The move of God is just remarkable, and God's just so, so good. So that's about me. That's awesome. awesome. Uh, my name is Kyla Brown. Um, I've been going to the church for all my life, basically. <laughs> um, I practically live here. Um, but... I have the privilege of uh, having our high school campus experience at Freedom, uh, which is where I go to school. Awesome. I'm a senior this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. Now, you, you two represent so many. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, um, year to date, from, from last school year beginning to now, we've had 430 salvations at our Come high schools. Yes. That's yes. incredible. And we're, we're just so proud of you both. So just, again, thank you for what you do. And thank you to all of the other students who are leading in that capacity because God is doing so many great things at your campuses, at your schools. And we're excited for more. Yeah. You know, not only, I want to ask you this question if you guys would answer it. Not only are you walking with God in this crazy environment, the crazy temperature of the world, right? But you're also leading other people to Jesus. Would you talk about that for a second? Yeah, for sure. And so in this crazy environment we live in, it's so important who we're surrounding ourselves by and who's, pour, who's pouring into our lives. And so I would say that we have incredible pastors. We know Pastor John, Miss Michelle. We have Pastor Ben and Pastor Lisa. You guys are remarkable. You steward so well, and you guys just care for people and love people so well. And so with all that being said, they've been able to pour into us and encourage us in the things of God. And so it's been remarkable to see how God has just used students to impact their schools, to use their influence to impact the kingdom of God and simply just sharing the goodness of who Jesus is. And so I would say overall in this environment that we're living in, it's so important who you surround yourself by, who's pouring into your life. And of course, your time with the Father is the most important thing because that is just going to overflow out of you. Yeah. yeah. Come on. That's really good. Yeah. It says in Proverbs, as iron sharpens iron, one man may sharpen another. It's very, very important to stay in community. And like you said, um, it's also very important to and it's the most important thing to just stay in the word, make sure that you're spending daily time with God because that's Amen. how you walk with him. But as far as leading people to Christ, something that Pastor John says a lot that I, I it's just stuck with me is that you can't um, lead people to the kingdom. You have to love them into the kingdom. Oh, so yeah. And a lot of people in school um, are very, very confused about their identity and who they are, mm -hmm. but all they really need is to know God. But it says in 1 John 4, you, whoever does not know love does not know God, for mm -hmm. God is love. So if you want to show them to Jesus, you have to love them first. That's right. That's, That's good. so good. Yes. That's really good. Thank you. That's awesome. So obviously your time with God is essential, and that is where you receive his love so you can pour out that love. And so if somebody in here wanted to start serving, what advice would you give them so that they could start serving and start using their gifts to help others? Absolutely. So I've been serving for a little while now, but it was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. And it has truly impacted my life. And you might hear all the time, you know, you need to be serving, you need to get plugged in, it has impacted my life. I want to encourage you, don't let that become stale to you. Don't let, don't harden your heart to knowing that because serving has truly impacted my life. I've been able to be around a community of people who would encourage me into the things of God, who would build me up into um, what he says about me. But the important thing is, is 
we ourselves are refreshed when we refresh others. Mm -hmm. And so it's more of an impact for me to see how my servant can impact somebody, how my servant can impact somebody's relationship with Jesus in a remarkable way. And so I would say, if you are on the edge about serving, please do it. You have such amazing gifts that God has given you. He's given you desires in your heart to serve the kingdom. And so whatever that looks like for you, press into that. And it doesn't need to just be in the context of a church. It can Mm -hmm. be in your sphere of influence. So I would encourage you, step into serving, serve the kingdom, serve people and love people. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to serve. Um, And in Galatians 5, I think it says that we are to serve others with the same love that Jesus served Mm -hmm. us with. And obviously he is the best servant ever. The son of man came to serve his kingdom. Mm -hmm. But another thing that's important to note, especially in schools, is that he came for everyone. Yes. And he came for all people. And it's very, very easy as Christians to just pick and choose who we serve and when we do. Mm-hmm. But it's important to know that when Jesus was walking and he was on his way and trying to help someone, he stopped when someone else needed his help. He didn't look at them and say, no, 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 I'm busy. Mm-hmm. He went, no, I see you, I love you. And it's because he loved us so much that we are filled with that love that we go and pour out and serve his people. That's, yeah, so, that's good. so good. How would you practically encourage students and parents alike to walk out their faith and to be a light in the world? Yeah, so the first thing is just knowing that God has given you gifts. He's given you desires in your heart. And so knowing that he's given you those gifts, you can use that to impact his kingdom. And so it says in Revelation that they overcame him, the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And so practically, I would encourage you, share your testimony. Share what God has done in your life. Share how he's impacted your marriage, how he's impacted your family, your school, your work life, how his faithfulness has just come over you. And so I would encourage you to use your testimony to tell people about Jesus and that doesn't need to just be in the context of a church building but in your sphere of influence in the people that you come in contact with at work and at school come on um and to be like the light of the world it also just points back to Jesus of he is the light Mm -hmm. of the world Mm -hmm. and to walk in faith it's described in two things believing in your heart and saying with your mouth so just don't be afraid to talk about Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean that you start every single conversation by, hello, my name is Kyla Brown. Have you heard of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? (laughs) Um, But you just don't be afraid to talk to him. And again, being the light of the world, you just have to go back to the love that Jesus showed his people. And to start being that, you just Mm -hmm. show love to others. Remarkable. Mm -hmm. Both of them, they're incredible, aren't they? Come on, church. So awesome. Thank you again. Hey, we just yeah, honor and we you celebrate guys. you and, and thank you for representing so many mm-hmm. as well that are walking out the call of God on their lives, being the hands and feet of Jesus and not just being hearers of the word, mm-hmm. but also being doers of the word. And so I just want to yeah. say thank, thank you again. You Let's give them a round of applause as they go. Thank you so much. So we wanted to show you two examples of amazing students that we have here at Victory. Because I know that in this world, whenever we turn on the news or we hear about this up and coming generation, it can seem very hopeless. It can seem like, you know, what in the world is going on. But again, these are just examples of students. Again, there's many here at Victory and I know there's many more out there, but these are just examples of the generation that's up and coming. And so if you've ever felt hopeless about what God is doing in this next generation, I point you back to them to show you that God is moving, that God is strong, that he is powerful. And while it might look very dark, there is a bright light that is coming up and shining forth. And so I encourage you with them, but not just, it doesn't just stop with them, because I know we're talking about this next generation and maybe you're in this room and you're a millennial or you're older and it can feel like, well, what about me? Well, I want you to know that this next generation, they need the generations that have come before them. That you are not obsolete, that you are not done, but that God very much has something for you to do. And so as the generations across the span, we need to work together. And so it's very easy, and I've heard this in history class, and I hear it now, that the older generation is talking about the younger generation in a poor way. And the younger generation says, you know, that the older generation, that they're out of date. 
But when we talk like that, we are dividing the kingdom of God. But we need to instead, but we need to partner together and recognize that we need each other. And so if you're in this room and you're more seasoned, I want to remind you that this younger generation can't do what they've been called to do without you. The Bible talks about how the older, gener- the older men should teach the younger men and the older women should teach the younger women. And so what that means is that we need to work together. We need to partner together to complete and do all that God has for us to do. Because there is revival, there is big things coming in the kingdom of God, but he needs both the young and the old and all in the middle, all of us to partner together to do what he has called us to do. Amen. And I want to remind you, you were made for this. Mm -hmm. You were made for this. Yeah. Every generation, you were made for this and you've got to learn to trust the Holy Spirit in you. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind you, you know, there's no junior Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right? And so the same Holy Spirit that's in Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that's in Pastor John, the same Holy Spirit that's in me is the same Holy Spirit in you. There's no junior Holy Spirit. And that's what I love about our church and the Next Generation Ministries is that we teach our kids how to hear the voice of God Mm -hmm. in everyday life. It's remarkable. Um, and, And so there's no junior Holy Spirit. And fear is not from God. There's so many things in our culture, so many things in our world right now that would produce Fear. Fear is from the enemy. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you think about the armor of God and putting on the armor of God, there's nothing for your back because you are to take new territory, child of God. Yes. We're to push forward. We've got to trust God in you because the fear is, fear is the enemy's tactic mm-hmm. to try to attempt you to stop you from doing the things of God. Mm-hmm. I heard this analogy one time about fear that I absolutely love. So I want everybody in here and under the sound of my voice at all campuses, I want you to think of a field where I'm going to pick a cornfield because we live in Pennsylvania. And so I want you to imagine a cornfield. And you know, back in the day, Farmers used to put out scarecrows, and they put it in not just anywhere in their crop, but they would put the scarecrows in the best part of their crop. Why? Because they wanted to stop the crows from coming and taking the best produce. They didn't care about the parts of their crop so much that maybe weren't growing so well or maybe weren't so luscious, but they cared about stopping the crows from coming to getting the best crop. And I want you to know that the enemy tries to put scarecrows in your field of life. That where God has his best blessings, where God has his best produce, his best fruit, his best decisions, his best yes in your life, the enemy will come and put a scarecrow there to try to stop you from doing what God has for you to do. So when you feel that fear... When you sense it in your life, I want you to remember that scarecrow. But on the other side of that scarecrow is God's best yes for you. It's his best path. It's his best yes. It's his best relationship, that best next step, whatever it might be. On the other side of that fear is God's best for you. And so when you feel fear come up, don't let it stop you, but you need to see it as a green light instead of a red light. You need to tell yourself, okay, the enemy doesn't want me to go here. Why? Because there's something good on the other side of this decision. There's something good on the other side of this yes. Because the enemy will always try to stop you. But in God's kingdom, he says, I only want you to advance. But the enemy will cause you to shrink back and say, oh, I can't do this. I'm going to be timid. But God has called you to take on new territories for his kingdom. That's right. You, you were created for this time. Greater is he that is in you than what is around you, right? And so you have the power of God in you and you were born during this time because God has something for you to do right now in this lifetime, every generation, every age. You're, you're not too young and, you know, you could have been born in the 1800s, but you weren't. You were born now. And God has given you tools. God has given you resources. When with that knowledge that you have, you know, so many people, they don't have the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They don't know about Jesus. You know, we were just in the Dominican Republic. You could walk down the, down the street right now and you could see that people don't know Jesus, but you do. Mm-hmm. How are you stewarding the truth of Christ? Yeah. How are you stewarding that with your life? And that's the question. What will you do with the knowledge of Christ? How will you steward it with what you do know about our Lord and Savior? Because we are watching right now in our culture, we're watching the rapid moral decay all, all across. The, it, it is it's so crazy. And the acceleration of evil inside the world like we've never seen before. But I've got to encourage you, light dispels darkness. Yeah, mom. 
John 1, 5, light dispels darkness. The moment you walk into a room, no matter how dark it is, and you turn on the light switch, it's gone. it has to go. Yes. It has to leave. And fear, what fear wants to do is it wants to influence you and try to control you and, and bind you. Mm-hmm. A few years ago, so we have two kids, but before Eli was born, it was just Mila, and we bought her a flashlight, which is so simple and innocent, but she absolutely loved it, and one day we were home alone, just her and I, and she said, Mommy, can we turn off all the lights? And of course I said, yeah. And so we turned off all the lights, and she gets her flashlight, and she turns it on, and she says, let's go find the darkness. And But the thing about it is that Mila is actually really afraid of the dark. She sleeps with the nightlight on, like she doesn't like it to be super dark in the house. But when she had that flashlight in her hands, it gave her the confidence that she needed to go towards the thing that scared her the most. And so I want to encourage you that while the world looks really dark, it looks really scary, it looks really evil, the answer is actually on the inside of you. And I want you to be confident knowing that you have everything that you need. You have the answer to the darkness that's around you, that while there is hopelessness in the world, you carry the hope. While there is sickness in the world, you carry the healing because everything that Jesus ever did on the cross is within you. And so when you see darkness in the world, don't shrink back from it. No, you are the answer. Go towards it because you carry the light. And so you need to go towards the darkness to bring the light to it. Don't let fear stop you, but carry the answer with you. And that answer is the truth of God. That's right. There's so many people that are saying, "I'm, I'm, I'm just going by my feelings. Right? Um, And what is your truth? Uh, I I just want to encourage you. I want to remind you. I want to tell you there is no your truth. Mm -hmm. There is the truth. And Jesus is the truth. Yeah. That's it. It is, it, he is the truth. He is true north, and God's word is the absolute truth. It's, what's, it, it's what governs our life. And, and listen, we do not live by our feelings. We live by faith. Yes. Our feelings are fleeting. Our feelings, they, they, they fade, they change rapidly, but the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, somebody. Come on. It doesn't change, and we, we are to govern our lives according to the word of God because it's the word of God that sets people free. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's not your feelings. It's not how you feel in the moment. It's the word of God, and what the enemy wants to do is the enemy wants to use fear to bind you, mm-hmm. to hold you, to control you. Fear is a bully. Yeah. Fear is a bully, and, and, and you could be starting preschool, you could be starting elementary school, you could be starting high school, you could be starting college, you could be a parent, you could be a grandparent. I want to encourage you that when you've got God in you, wherever you go, it becomes the safest place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That place becomes blessed. You're sitting on an airplane, that's the safest airplane in the air because you're on it. Mm-hmm. Because of Jesus in you, greater is he that is in you than what is around you, than what is inside the world. In fact, the Bible says this in 1 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, of power, and of sound mind. A spirit of love, power, and sound mind. And, And when fear bubbles up inside of you, and you get those feelings, fear will cause you to try to force things. Fear will cause you to try to panic and, and, and to control. How many know the tighter you hold something, the quicker things leave? Mm-hmm. And, and it will cause you to have all these insecurities that will come up. And, and, but i got to tell you that, that God and the spirit of Jesus is one that is empowering. Mm-hmm. It's and an empowering spirit. Sorry. When you start to see these things pop up, when you start to see that fear, those indicators, like, you know, That's when right. you're driving and the check engine light comes on, you know you got to check something out. These signs of panic, of trying to c- control, of insecurity is your check engine light, of that fear is trying to get in and stop you from doing what God is, ha- is trying to get you to do. A few weeks ago, we put Mila in dance camp. And Mila can be timid and shy. She likes to be at home. She's a homebody. And so, you know, going and doing something new was scary for her, just like it is for any of us. And so every day before dance camp, Mila would tell me that she was afraid. And so we would encourage her. We would build her up. We would remind her what God has said about her. But every day we would tell her, like, you just sometimes have to do things afraid. So just because you feel afraid, that doesn't mean that you stop doing what God has called you to do. You might feel that fear, but guess what? Faith can still rise up too. You might feel like, oh, I don't know about this. You might feel doubt. 
but faith can reside even when there's doubt, even when there's fear, but you keep going because the opposite of fear is faith. And so we've been talking about what fear can stop you from doing, but I wanna tell you what stops fear and that is faith. And so when you feel these indicators come up, when you feel that fear start to rise up, you decide that no matter how I feel, I'm going to choose to rely on God's word above it all. And if you don't know God's word, then look it up. We have access to so many different things. And so if there's something that you're afraid of, if there's something that you're holding back for because you're scared, I want you to get in God's word and I want you to flush out that fear with God's word because that is the only way that will you allow yourself to move forward. But God wants you to move forward. But we don't do that by focusing on the fear, but instead we look to him and we remind ourselves how big he is, how good he is and what his word says. And that will give you the courage to move forward with what God has for you to do. That's right. You know, I believe that Gen Z and Gen Alpha. Can you believe that? Gen Alpha, that's our third and fourth graders coming up right now. Mm -hmm. I I believe that right now they they are hungry for the things of God and we see it. We're witnessing it. We're experiencing it. They're hungry for the power of God. They're hungry for the presence of God. They are hungry for the word of God. And God has given them the tools and the resources in their toolbox right now to fix the problem at hand. And I think it can be daunting, right? The the order that we get when we look at things, we're like, well, that's not the way that it was when I was growing up. And how in the world are we going to make it through this? And and I got to tell you that God has deposited in them the grace and the anointing that they need. And we've got to trust that. But that doesn't mean that as an older generation that we're obsolete. The ones, the ones that, are, that, that have more wisdom and that they're seasoned in life, you're not obsolete. In fact, you're an accelerator mm-hmm. to the things of God. Yeah. Thank God that we've got young people around us with stamina. Amen. And they could just go and they could get after it. You go get them, Tiger, but we're going to bring the wisdom. We're going to bring those, the, the, the know-how. And I just encourage you that as the body of Christ, like Alyssa started with, come alongside younger people and help them. Mm-hmm. Help them. Help them step into God's calling in their life. Mm-hmm. Be that accelerator. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whether you are 5 or 95 in this room today or you are at Meadville or Newcastle, I want to encourage you that God has something for you to do. If you are still breathing, that means God is not done with you yet and he wants you to do that next thing. And so, guys, remember, we need each other. That just because this younger generation is coming up, that doesn't mean that those who are seasoned, that we can just sit back and relax and say, okay, they've got this. No, we, they need you more than ever. They need your wisdom. They need your advice. They need your your godly um, advice. And so I'm sure that as we were talking today, that maybe God put something on your heart. And and I want to ask those who are maybe more seasoned that if you're in this room and you're not pouring into the next generation, my question is, why not? Why not? Because I want to tell you this, that while you think you might not have something to offer, you very much do. That's right. And so this next generation, they, they need you. They need your wisdom. They need your advice. They need your counsel. And so without you doing what God has called you to do, the body of Christ isn't complete. And so if you're not pouring into the next generation, but you're seasoned in here, I would encourage you, ask God, God, what do you want me to do? How can I help this next generation? Because you have gone through some things and you've learn some things that the next generation absolutely needs to walk out what God has for them. And for those in this room that are younger and you don't have a mentor, you need to get a mentor. You know, I'm in my 30s, so I have mentors, but I also mentor others because I'm in that middle season. And so I need both. I need people to tell me what to do in life sometimes, people to just reassure me and remind me of what God says. But guys, we need each other. And if we don't rely with, on each other and if we are not locking arms with one another, then we will be disunified. We will not be unified like, like God has called us to be. And unity is one of the biggest things in the body of Christ. That's what Jesus overemphasized so many times. We need to be unified. And so don't start talking about another generation poorly because every time you speak that out of your mouth, you are aligning yourself with the devil instead of with the word of God. And so anytime you hear somebody speak poorly of another generation, you remind them of what God's word says. And parents in here, your kids are being... Things are being spoken over them that are complete lies. And so you continue to speak in authority of what the Bible says about your children because you have the ultimate authority over their lives right now. And so you speak out those blessings every single day to combat what the world is saying about them that is complete and utter lies. 
but everybody in here, we need you in the body of Christ in every capacity. And so if you're not serving or you know, connected in some way or using what God has given you, I would just encourage you that in your quiet time, you just ask God, God, what do you want me to be doing? in this time, in this season of my life. And I, you know, I think a danger for us as young people at all of our campuses and even online, the danger is because we live in a, an informational rich society where everything's at your fingertips, where you can feel like I read a book and I know it all. Mm-hmm. And it's a danger, okay? It's a danger and, and I gotta encourage you that that's pride. And, 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 and so the Lord can't operate with that. And so get in and get around people that have actually done something not just talked about doing something, okay? Yeah. So, so talk is cheap, right? Get around those that are like, maybe they don't have all the words, but they're gonna tell you they got some grit and they've worked through some things and they've hit some potholes and here's the potholes that I can save you from. And so I just encourage you as someone who's young to get around that. Mm-hmm. Now you've heard a lot of, of, of next steps maybe. And as Alyssa has, has shared, but maybe you've come in the room, maybe you've come in one of our campuses or you're watching online and you've never invited Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior and that's your next step. Mm-hmm. And I wanna encourage you, do not leave today, do not end the live stream today before you invite Jesus in to make him your Lord and Savior because he wants a relationship with you. He wants to do life with you. He wants to empower you in the season that you're in right now. And so what I'm gonna ask is, is that at all of our campuses, I'm gonna ask us to all bow our heads right now and and, and to close our eyes. You know, Jesus said this. Jesus said that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man comes to the Father except through me. It's only through Jesus. It's only through relationship with Jesus that you and I get to spend eternity with the Father. It doesn't matter how much good you do, although you and I should do a lot of good. It's It's our relationship with our Father. It's the relationship with him. You know, Paul talked about in, in Romans 10, 9 through 10, he said that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross, rose from the grave three days later, that you'll be saved. And so in a moment, at all of our campuses online, we're all gonna pray together. We're gonna take that, that moment to invite Jesus into our life. So everybody under the sound of my voice, if you've never invited Jesus in to make him Lord and Savior of your life, I wanna give you that opportunity right now, right where you're at, with with nobody looking around. This is between you and I, you and God and our campus pastors right now. If you would like to invite Jesus into your life and make him Lord and Savior of your life, would you just raise your hand right here? Thank you, thank you, I see those hands. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, you can put your hands down. Thank you, and I believe that our campuses, our campus pastors have seen you, and I also believe that online God sees you, God sees you. What we're gonna do right now is we're all gonna pray together as a family. And repeat after me, say it where you hear. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I believe with all my heart that Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins and my salvation. And you rose from the grave grave. three days later. later. Thank you. you. I'm a child of God, God. and I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, name. everybody said amen and amen. Come on, glory to God. It's incredible. Well, before we move any further, we want to take a moment to pray over students, parents, and teachers. So if you are a student, whether that's preschool, all the way through college, I'm going to ask you to stand up. And if you are a teacher, we're going to ask you to stand up as well. We we just want to pray over you guys, believe things as we're coming up to this new school year. So um, students and teachers, if you could just stand up to your feet all around. And, and if you're around them, you can go ahead and stretch out your hand to somebody that's next to you or, or you know, if it's family, go ahead and put your hand on their shoulder and mm-hmm. as we pray for them. Awesome. So let's go ahead. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray together. Father God, I just, I lift up teachers right now to you in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that they are on the forefront of teaching students and teaching these up, this upcoming generation. I ask that you just surround them with protection as they head into this new school year. Then everywhere this, the, 
their feet step, God, that they would just be protected. We just ask that your angels are surrounding them, that no evil will befall them, no harm will come near them. And we just claim this over them now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just ask that you give them supernatural wisdom and guidance as they are pouring into this next generation, that as issues arise, that you would just show them what to do. God, help them to just be a light to you, to their peers, to their students, and in their school district. God, let there just be something different about them. Let people just notice something different about them. And I just give them favor. I speak favor over them now in Jesus' name, that they would have favor with their coworkers, favor with their principal, favor with their students, that, you know, anything that you're putting on their heart to do, God, that you would just open up that door for them. And I just thank you, God, so much for the blessing that they are, that you would empower them and strengthen them as they go into this school year, that Holy Spirit, you would just be with them and that help them to feel, be tough as they are facing difficult situations every single day. But God, I just thank you for them and I just speak blessings over thank them. Thank you, Father. And we, th we thank you for our kids, Father. I thank you for our kids. And Holy Spirit, as you open their ears and you open their hearts so they hear you so clearly, every day they hear you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the good work that you're doing in our kids' lives. And we just speak over them right now, a hedge of protection, Father. I thank you, Lord, for protecting their mind, Lord, for protecting their, their, their physical body, their well-being, Lord. I just, I, I rebuke in the name of Jesus, I rebuke de depression, I rebuke anxiety, I rebuke loneliness, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that this is a mighty generation and we speak and we command over their life well-being and blessings, Father, as, as you protect them and your ministering angels go forth. Holy Spirit, you're with them all the days of their life and everywhere that the soles of their feet touch are blessed in the name of Jesus. They're blessed going in and they're blessed coming out, Lord, and I thank you as we speak that over our children, that no weapon formed from hell will prosper against our kids. Our our kids are yours and they are blessed in the name of Jesus and their friends are blessed and their classrooms are blessed Lord and their cities are blessed because everywhere they go they take new territory and we thank you Jesus that you are with them and that you're leading them and you're guiding them and protecting them and so we speak that over our children's father I thank you for the good work that you're doing in yes, them. thank you thank you, thank you Lord. and father God I just lift up parents to you right now as they are helping their children to navigate these difficult times, I just speak godly wisdom over their lives, that they would know exactly how to handle the situations that their children are dealing with. God, that they would feel bold and that they would not bow to fear, but that they would walk in faith and that they would choose to raise their children according to your word, not what the world says that they should do, not what other parents say they should do, but God, let them listen to your voice and your voice alone. I pray that you um, power, empower their relationship with you and strengthen it, Father, so that they are so in tune with you that you are just speaking secrets to them about their children so that they know what their children are going through without their children even telling them. Give them insight into what they should do before anything even arises, but God, I just thank you that you have anointed every single parent under the sound of my voice to raise the children that you have given them. Nobody else could do it better but them. So I pray that they walk in confidence and strength knowing that you have called them for these children for such a time as this. It wasn't a mistake, but you have called them to this situation. And I just speak strength over marriages right now. God, that any relationship that is struggling, Lord, I just speak restoration over it right now in the name of Jesus so that the whole home could come into alignment and be restored. I ask God that you repair any issues, any hurt, any damage that's been done in any households. And for the single parents out there, God, I just speak strength over them. Father God, I thank you that they are filling in for two. And God, I just ask that you spend, send spiritual mothers and fathers, God, wherever they feel like they're lacking to just help them. But Lord, we thank you for them and the call that's on their life. And when I praise you for every parent and I praise you, God, for any foster parent or adoptive parent, God, I pray that you equip them to and empower them to do what you have called them to do. Lord, I thank you for strengthening them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, church. <laughs> Glory to God. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.